Well, I am out here at a customer's place. I'm gonna work on his mower. Uh, I know it's off season, but here it is January and it's like 80 degrees out here, you know. <laughs> Winter has not hit us here in Texas yet, so uh, so I do get a few mowers to work on right now. Um, I'm kind of surprised that, uh, yeah, it, it's not bad. I mean, even my own backyard, I need to mow it pretty soon. But, um, yeah, January, and it's, it's just like last year. Hopefully we won't have a big old freeze like we did last year. Was it February, I guess? But everybody's preparing for it getting all their generators worked on and and this guy uh, apparently he needs to do his yard one last time before winter hits and let me show you what I got So here it is. This is a John Deere. Um, what model is it? I forget. The J60, something. No, I can't see it. But anyway, it has a 6.5 uh, breathe Stratton on it. See, it's a rear wheel drive, self propelled. And I believe he was saying he tried to start it and. Uh, it ran for like 30 seconds and then would quit. And so he said, work on it, get it fixed, and go ahead and give it a, it's time for a tune-up and all that good stuff. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is check the oil. It could use a little oil, but it didn't look that bad. But that's good that he's changing it, and he said a new blade... Oh wow, yeah, that one's pretty damaged. Okay, so I got the blade to switch that out. I guess the first thing I'm going to do, oh there it is, J, JS60. Casey Nielsen Limited, Humboldt, Iowa. Wow. I wonder if he bought it out there or... That's just where it came from. Who knows? So the first thing I'm going to do, I guess, I am going to take the air cleaner off. I'm going to spray some carb cleaner down in there and, uh, and see if it'll turn over. Because I'm sure I'm going to have to clean the carburetor and all that good stuff. Trying to stay out of the shade here, or I'm trying not to create any shade, put it that way. Um, see, I got the cover off, and it's been a long time since I've worked on one of these Breeze and Stratton engines of this generation here. And, uh, and I brought the wrong air filter, so hopefully I can clean this off for this guy. bad the, the pre-filter is a little dusty so I will uh, I'll get that all cleaned off for him all right. well, it is priming let's see if it'll try to turn over string. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. When I'm pulling it out, you can see that's as far as I can go. I thought it was the flywheel hanging up, but you can see the string is just too short. I think I'm going to take this cover off and make sure 
because the rope you can see here, if you can see that closely, you can see how it's starting to shred off there. That's about to, that's about to snap off. But I don't think I brought any extra cord. I'll check in my other box. Something happened there. I'll give you a good idea of what I'm looking at. You can see all this is bent up. So something happened there. Let me back off here. Well, lo and behold, I did bring some pull rope with me. I think this stuff is a little larger diameter than what's factory on there, but it should work. So, uh, I guess I will go ahead and uh, take this off, see if we can replace the cord, get it to pull properly. Take a look. Yeah, so it's pretty simple. I always bring a pair of scissors with me just for this purpose. But uh, snip that off. We reuse the handle. Poking it through, it is kind of tight. Oh, come on. All right, got, got it all put back on. Like I said, the spring was uh, the rope was kind of thick, but luckily, if it stretches out, because um, it'll only get back up around up here. And that's when the coil is too thick. You know what I mean? Because of the diameter of the of the rope. But from here out, it pulls like it should. All right. Well, let's see if it's going to try to crank over this time before I start taking the carburetor off. up but it felt like it was trying to uh, to die um, I know there was not a whole lot of gas in there but I think just spraying this carb cleaner down in there you know loosened up whatever was uh, blocking it to grab so I'm gonna go ahead and just take the carburetor off Take a look. The 
gaskets look really good, so that's good. And what else? Those are three eighths, and I need to pinch off the fuel line. It's almost empty, but. Move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Yeah, so we got all that pinched off. Let's get the three eighths here. So far, not bad. Yeah, not bad at all, but if you can see in here, see that little disc that's down here in the corner? It is supposed to be, let me take the the float off so you can better see what I'm talking about. Yeah, see that? Well it's missing. It's supposed to there's supposed to be one right here. I thought this one had flopped around, but no, it's just it's just gone. Oh, here it is in the bowl. Yep. So let me press this back in. And uh, looks like it was pressed in before. Alright, so I got that thing pressed back in. That one right there. And it's, uh, and I told the guy if it keeps coming out, because it looks like it was. It was pressed in before. I bet it keeps falling out, but uh, but I warned him of it. So he's saying if it does it again, he's probably just going to get a new carburetor. And, uh, and hopefully he'll keep this one running because it's kind of rare to see this particular model here in Austin. Um, it again the JS60 and, and he brought it with him from uh, from Iowa so that's kind of cool well I guess I can take a look at his spark plug looks like. From the outside it looks fairly new. Just awfully uh, a lot of carbon deposits on it. So it must it, must, it was probably because of uh, with that little cap off on the carburetor it was probably running really rich. right? So, uh, I think I've got a replacement for them. We'll just put a new carburetor, uh, a new spark plug on.
that's draining out. Let's see if we can change the blade out for them. Alright, you can see through the shadows. This should be see any motor, no drive, nothing. So that's kind of strange. The mowing deck and everything is set up for for real wheel drive, but there's no, uh, <laughs> you see all that? Yeah, so you can see it's made for rear-wheel drive, and uh, but I don't see any controls here, unless they're gone, and you can see this just totally empty in here. But there's the pulley. But uh, that's strange. Oh well. Big test. Let's back off here. I think I need to put some gas in it. He's just getting ready for putting it away for winter. pretty strong. Seems like the RPM is a little high. But he might like it like that. 
Well, I guess that's it. So it was just a, uh, a quick fix on the pull rope, um, cleaning everything out. It was a little cap in the carburetor that had come off. And I have a feeling it's probably going to drop again. You know, I tried to press it back on the best I could, but with all the vibrations going on, um, I'll bet it gets knocked off again. Then I went ahead and, you know, the, the big tune-up, replaced the blade, uh, changed the oil, and changed the spark plug. So that's about it for this one. It was kind of a neat one because you don't see this particular model around here much at all. Um, I think I've seen one other just in the past three or four years, you know, this particular model. But the one I worked on it actually had the rear wheel drive on it, um, the self-propelled rear wheel. This one, kind of strange, it looks like it's set up for it, but it's not there. <laughs> There's no uh, gearbox or anything uh, back on the rear, so who knows? But that's kind of cool, this guy brought it from the uh, Humboldt. Humboldt, Iowa. Nope. And he still has it, so that's kind of cool. Well, I guess that's it for this video. Uh, just decided to, to film a, a trip out to a customer's place. I usually rarely do that, but uh, but anyway, that's it. You know, uh, once again, be sure to like, be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.